video, I'll be discussing the sources of power and authority in Iran. To begin, I'd like to share a brief history of Iran. So what is known today as Iran used to be Persia. I mean, it was very prominent in the classical world. In the Middle Ages, it was a big center for Shia Islam. But then oil was found worldwide. And this oil was, well, in big abundances in Persia. So the Russians and the British went to Persia, said, you know, if you'll give us some of the oil you produce here, well, we'll support you and your rule militarily. But in 1906, the first legislature was created in Persia. First time Persians could elect some elected leaders. They didn't have all the power, but they had some power. Then in 1921, the Pahlavi dynasty took power um, from a military coup, and they ruled for quite a while. Then in 1953, the democratically elected leader of, well, at this point it was Iran, a few years after the Pahlavi dynasty was created, one of the reforms was to change the name of the area from Persia to Iran. So in this area called Iran, Mohammed Mossadegh was overthrown in a coup, um, supported by the United States. And so the new leader would just be the Shah. And that, that's really important to know because these reforms, not just changing the name, but very pro-Western in the business deals and the secular religious focus, rather than the Shia Islam, which Persia or Iran later on was largely focused on, more focused on this secular religious view. This all leads to the Iranian Revolution with upset people in 1979. So some of the resistance to democratization. Well, we have to look at the groups of the Iranian Revolution. First, um, you had some Marxists, you had some communists, you had some very pro-Shia Islam players in this revolution. Then in December 1979, a new constitution of Iran was established, which established an Islamic Republic focus on Shia Islam, and that's where the new name of the country currently comes to the Islamic Republic of Iran. Then in 1980, the Iran-Iraq War began, Iraq with the support of the United States, who really wanted to slow these, the revolutionary spirit in the Middle East, had Iraq thinking, well, if they took over the oil fields quickly, they could win the war, but instead, a lot of people on both sides died, and the war was very much drawn out and ended in close to a territorial stalemate. Well, looking at Iran in the modern sense today, and the unitary state, Iran has 31 provinces. Each province has a capital and a governor, which is appointed by the leader of the interior in Iran for each province. Um, you know, the governor would rule it. But recently in 2017, the Guardian Council had this new, thought of this new rule that would have a Muslim majority areas could only be represented by a Muslim. And the issue with this is there, were, there was a Zoroastrian leader in a city who couldn't be elected to represent a Muslim majority area. So later on, this rule, as one of the groups that mediates between the Guardian Council and the Parliament decided, okay, we're going to have this anyone in local City council or village elections, you know, it doesn't matter who you represent, you can represent even if you're not of the same faith. Finally, looking at the legitimacy and challenges to the state of modern Iran, there's the nuclear program, which, of course, the development of nuclear weapons by the Iranian state has caused, you know, some Western places to place sanctions, which did harm the economy. There, there are some human rights questions based on groups that aren't Shia, of Shia Islam faith who might be having their lives negatively affected in some ways based on the huge amount of Sharia law placed on everyone who might not even follow the Islamic faith. There are some illegal drugs coming in from Afghanistan, which does harm um, Iran, and a lot of people have died actually from them. And then in the southeast of the country, there is Sistan and the state of Sistan and Baluchistan, which is where there's a lot of Sunni Muslims, who, which 
um, is a different part of Islam from the Shia. And there's a group called Jaish Ulad, which is operating there, um, also operates in Pakistan, which some have called a terrorist group. Um, they've, they've operated there, they've, you know, tried to cause issues in Sistan and Baluchistan, and they've been at odds with the Iranian government. And one of the people which was alleged to be part of the group was J Javid Dengaran Khalid, which was, you know, some of questioned the ethics of his questioning to where he did admit to killing two Iranians, and then later on he was sentenced and he was executed later in January 2021. So all those questions, and that's just one of the, you know, that shows that religious challenge is one of the challenges in Iran. That is where the state is today.